Hello, so let's start the theory part of Smart Connect in this video. So for Smart Connect zone, get into the cluster management, go to the network configuration. So the Smart Connect software is something that deals with network configuration. So you can find that particular configuration in the network configuration tab. So here you can see external network, internal network, DNS cache and settings are the tabs available on the network configuration. So the first thing that you need to configure here is a group net. Group net, group net or nothing but the DNS servers. So that holds the DNS servers. So whichever DNS server according to the environment, you'll have to get that and configure those DNS servers on the group net. So group net is the root hierarchy and below that you'll have subnet and below subnet will have pool. So here you can see this is the, the tree structure. So group net below that group net can have subnets, subnet can have pools. So pools is a is an area where we will be configuring the interfaces and we'll be naming the smart connect zone. So let's check the subnet. On the subnet, we will be having the net, net mask, the gateway address, gateway priority, MTU, and the smart connect service IP. So as I told you, Smart Connect Service IP is the one which is responsible for finding out the node according to the client connection policy. So here you can see the Smart Connect Service IP that is configured. Smart Connect Service IP should be the IP which should not be part of any, any other IP range. So this particular IP should be dedicated and you can have a Smart Connect Service name for that as well. And also you can have a VLAN tagging here and so that's all in the subnet so in subnet you'll be configuring the uh, net mask the gateway ip priority mtu and the smart connect service ip coming down you have the pool so pool is the area where we'll be configuring the interfaces and i will be giving the ips for the interfaces and we'll be setting up the smart connect zone name so here you can see the access zone access zone part we will see later so ip range so this is the ip range that i have given so i have given from 11 to 30 so i have reserved all this ip for this particular uh, pool coming down interfaces we have the logical lnn is nothing but the logical node name so lnn node 1 interface ext1 in node 1 we have ext1 connected and node 2 we have ext2 connected and the node 3 ext1 connected so all these ext the external one one gig interfaces are given an ip 11 12 and 13 so as the ip range starts with 11 so it is assigning from 11 and coming down we have the zone name so this zone name is the one that you will be giving to the um, so that you will be giving to the uh, user so this uh, while creating a share so you will have to give this zone name along with the share name so that the user will be able to access the share through this particular zone name. So when the user access the zone, so the user will be able to connect through any of three these interfaces. Whatever interfaces that we are assigning to this particular pool, only through that the users will be able to access the ISO zone. So that, that's the uh, um, work of uh, Smart Connect. So load balancing and, uh, and the failover. So in this case, we have the client connection policy as a round robin. So, as I told you, round robin is a default uh, client connection policy. So, uh, in this case, first the uh, logical node number one will get a chance, and on the next client, two will get a chance, and the next client, three will get a chance, and again next client, the one will get a chance. So, this is how the round round robin works. And let's edit and check the other other uh, policies that are available. So here you can see the client connection, client counts, throughput, and CPU usage. So all these three will work um, according to the number of uh, throughputs, client connection, and CPU usage a single node has. Coming down, you have the IP failover policy. So as I told you, the um, uh, IP failover is nothing but whenever um, one particular node or uh, goes off how this IP has to fail over, whether it has to go as a round robin or whether it has to go as a um, 
client connection or throughput or CPU usage. So when when this is set as a round robin, let's say node one goes off and node one has two IPs, then two IPs will be transferred to each of the node in a round robin policy. So this is called IP failover policy. Coming down, you have rebalance policy. So when again the node one comes online, so whether it has to go as automatic, automatically the IP has to be assigned or in a manual. So these two are the options available. Coming down, we have the allocation method as static, 